بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر آئین تیڈ ڈائی ویڈ دا نیکس ٹاپک موسٹ پروبلی دا لاسٹ آف دس چپٹر ویل آئی ہیف سکپٹ ان آرڈر دی فیلٹرنگ بٹ ویل ڈو ایڈ بٹ ان آرڈر ان دا سیکوینس دس ایز دا لاسٹ سسٹمز ڈسکرائبڈ بائی لینئر کانسٹن کوئیفیشن ڈیفرنشل ایکویجنز Fine, so we've already seen this when we were discussing the time domain and we, we know how to solve them. When we solve them, we have the homogeneous solution, the particular solution, this and that and this and that. You know it very well, although I did not teach it, maybe I have not teach it that properly as you, have, you would have seen it in your mathematics courses. Anyways. What is our goal now in this particular video? The goal is that we, if we are given a linear constant coefficient differential equation, we are given a system represented by this sort of an equation. How do we calculate the Fourier transform of it? The frequency domain, uh, the frequency response of it. Fine. So, uh, you know what this, I would write a shortcut linear constant coefficient differential equation. You know that any nth order differential equation is written like this. You have a summation k is running from 0 to n, you have a k and you have the, the kth derivative of y of t and on the other side you have k running again you have a summation you have now bk is another constant and you have the kth derivative of x of t and isn't it like this it is and let me name it equation number one If a system, if an input is given to an LTI system, x of t is my input, y of t is my output, the input-output relationship is, is in such sort of a manner, how do I calculate the frequency response h of j omega for this sort of a signal? What is frequency response h of j omega? It is the Fourier transform of the impulse response of the system you know it very well frequency response is the Fourier transform of the impulse response of the system now if I have to calculate h of j omega so what do I do first of all so let's say I have a method number one Let's say I have a method number one and that is if I consider my x of t is an exponential signal. Exponential of j omega t. So if this is an input to an LTI system, so what does this mean? That my output would be the convolution of uh, the output would uh, as this is the eigenvalue this is the eigenvalue of the system so this would be equal to some scaling factor and that scaling factor is h of j omega multiplied exponential of j omega t right right this is because this is the eigenfunction of the system we know it very well now what you did you put all these values in one you take the derivatives and then you solve it split on either side solve it for h of j omega this is your method number one put these values in one and solve for h of j omega a very lengthy process a very difficult process i cannot do it i cannot do it if you can yes you're most welcome do it please yes i cannot do it so for people like me everybody has an alternative method we have a method number two we'll do it together yes so the second method is now we have a tool that is the Fourier transform tool so in method number two we do what we take 
the Fourier transform of equation number one. So basically this means that if you take the Fourier transform, so this, uh, you know, summation would, would get outside, that is something clear, aka some constant coefficient that would get outside. The basic objective is that we would be taking the Fourier transform of this derivative so that we can apply the, the derivative, the differentiation property of Fourier transform. That's the motive. So what do I do is I take this summation outside. I write this AK outside and now I have the Fourier transform of what of this thing the K derivative of the output Y of T and to the other side similarly the summation is left the BK term the constant coefficient and now you take the Fourier transform of the kth derivative of the input terms and is that clear till here? It should be simple as it is. Now we also know or if we consider or if we suppose or whatever you want it to be that my x of d the input has a Fourier transform x of j omega my output y of t has a corresponding Fourier transform y of j omega fine so over here can I not apply the differentiation property that if x of d has x of j omega is the Fourier transform then the derivative of x of t would have the Fourier transform j omega multiplied with the previous Fourier transform and similar is the case for the for the what for the y of t and for the kth derivative you would have it like this so now let me do it now let me do it so i would write like this that summation k running from 0 to n i have an a k and now for this i would write what i would write a j omega raised to the power k and you have a y of j omega Similarly, this is equal to summation k running from 0 to m, you have a bk and then for that Fourier transform you have j omega raised to the power k, you have x of j omega and isn't it like this it is. Now if I do what? If I, uh, you know, this y of j omega has nothing to do with the summation this uh, because summation with respect to k this x of j omega has nothing to do with the summation I take them outside so which means that can I not write y of j omega and then the summation a k and j omega to the power k fine and then similarly over here you have an x of j omega you have a summation k running from 0 to m b k j omega to the power k and isn't it like this it is can i not write now i do what i do what i write y by x so y by x y of j omega upon x of j omega so y divided by x would be b divided by a right so i would have a summation k running from 0 to m b k j omega to the power k divided by summation k running from 0 to n a k j omega to the power k is this fine till here it is okay now let me remind you of one thing the convolution property the convolution 
property. If x of t is the input to an LTI system, the output is y of t. What would be y of t? This would be x of t convolved with h of t. And what does the convolution property say? Now for y of t, if you have your y of j omega, and now if you're talking about the frequency domain, so in the frequency domain, you have to simply multiply these two signals if you're convolving them in the time domain. So this means that this would be x of j omega multiplied with h of j omega. And have a look, if I have a y of j omega by x of j omega, what is that? That is going to be h of j omega and what is my unknown? known this h of j omega is my unknown and what do I have I have y by x which means that I have got my answer and what is my answer my answer is that my h of j omega which is basically equal to y of j omega divided by x of j omega and this is something like this k running from 0 to m bk j omega to the power k divided by a summation k running from 0 to n a k j omega to the power k and this is what it is this is what was my unknown thing i have got my frequency response let me write over here this is the frequency response and what is the frequency response it is the convolution it is the the the, the Fourier transform of the impulse response coming to examples we can find the frequency response by directly directly by only looking at the coefficients those that are present in the linear constant coefficient differential equation which is this one i show you in examples i show you in examples now now if we talk of examples so let's say the book examples you you name it you number it for yourself whatever is the number this is the book example you have uh, the derivative of y of t the derivative of y of t plus two times y of t and this is equal to x of t and so for this the for the the h of j omega is unknown so h of j omega you can uh, simply simply calculate h of j omega is summation k running bk and this and that so if i write h of j omega this is equal to have a look first k equal to zero k equal to zero means no derivative so no derivative term is this one so for k equal to zero bk is one j omega to the power zero is one so only one over here divided by k equal to 0 over here you have this term a k is 2 right and then plus you have a plus k equal to 1 means the first derivative first derivative over here a k for the first derivative is 1 j omega to the power 1 is 1 so which means that you have the Fourier transform equal to j omega plus 1 that is it that is how simply you can tell now if you're asked the corresponding the corresponding uh, the corresponding time domain signal which means h of t so what would that be so you can of course use the inverse Fourier transform formula and you can do it yourself but for this sort of a signal this is a very uh, you know basic signal that exponential of negative a t u of t this is a signal that would have the Fourier transform equal to 1 over a plus j omega this you need to remember this you need to remember the table is given in the book and this we have already proved as well so which means over here if this is a plus j omega so this is the the, this is j omega plus 2 which means uh, that my h of t for this case is what it's exponential of negative 2 t and of course you can prove it by which formula h of t is equal to 1 upon 2 pi right 1 upon 2 pi negative infinity to positive h of j omega exponential of j omega t the integration is with respect to omega you do it yourself you get the same answer 
You get the same answer. Next example, please. The next example is, uh, should I remove the board? No, let it be. The second derivative of y of t, let me take my copy. The next example states what? The second derivative of y of t plus 4 times the first derivative of y of t plus 3 times y of t. This is equal to this first derivative of x of t plus 2 times x of t. Again, h of j omega is unknown. h of j omega is unknown. So, what do we have again? I would write it like this. h of j omega states what? The x. k equal to 0 means no derivative. This one, no derivative. bk is 2. 2. k plus. k equal to 1 means what? The first derivative. First derivative term, you have a 1 j omega to the power 1 divided by we don't have for k equal to 2 the second derivative we don't have coming down k equal to 0 no derivative term is this one you have a 3 plus the first derivative term is this one 4 into j omega to the power 1 of course plus the second derivative term is 1 you have a j omega whole squared which means you have a j omega plus 2 and how should I write it? This is a j omega squared plus 4 times j omega. Yes, you could write it like this j omega whole squared plus 4 times j omega plus 3. This is my frequency response of this system. I have calculated it within 10 or 20 seconds. Over here, I'm taking time because I'm explaining it to you. You guys, you understand it. I understand it. You can do it within less than 10 seconds. Is that clear? Now again, if my corresponding uh, time domain signal h of t is unknown. So what do we have? So I would uh, do it, you know, by, you can do it through the inverse Fourier transform again. But a simpler method is the partial fraction method by partial fraction method and what does this method say that you can replace this particular thing that is j omega plus 2 and in the denominator I can split it you know how to split it you can say j omega plus 1 into j omega plus 3 j omega plus 1 j omega plus 3 so this i could write as what i could write as an a upon j omega plus 1 plus b upon j omega plus 3 right and you know the partial fraction method can you do it yourself yes you can so what you do is you take the lcm the lcm is of course this thing j omega plus 1 j omega plus 3 you multiply it on both sides so which means you get what you get a j omega plus 2 on this side and is equal to a times j omega plus 3 plus b times j omega plus 1 now to find a you put you have to make b0 to find b you have to make a0 you can do it yourself you can do it yourself solving implies what let me put the value a 1 upon 2 a1 is equal a is equal to b is equal to 1 upon 2 so let me remove the board let me remove some portion from the board Okay, so now I could do what this has come out to be my h of j omega. So my h of j omega has come out to be 1 upon 2 uh, into 1 over j omega plus 1. And then you have a plus 1 upon 2 again into 1 upon j omega plus 1. Have a look, j omega plus 1. J omega plus 1 is this thing. So which means now if I take uh, this, so I would mention this with the red color. So this implies that my corresponding h of t would be what? 1 upon 2 and it's multiplied with exponential of j omega plus 1. So 1, so negative 1 u of t. So you will have an exponential of negative t 
u of t and isn't it like this it is and then you have this plus 1 upon 2 and for this you have by plus 1 again so negative 1 again you have a plus 3 over here we have a plus 3 over here this is plus 3 Yes, so I made a mistake. So now this plus 3, we will have an exponential of negative 3t. 3t, u of t, and this is my answer. Let's say I have one other example, and that is again from the book, okay? Not from my side. Okay. So what is the example? Uh, x of t is given... In this example, x of t is given that is exponential of negative t u of t and h of j omega is given this is which is this particular thing again j omega plus 2 divided by j omega plus 1 into j omega plus 3 and y of t is unknown y of t is unknown you can do it yourself right you can do it uh, yourself you know that if x of t is an input is given to an lti system y of t would be the output y of t would be equal to x of t convolved h of t or in the frequency domain y of j omega would be x of j omega simply multiplied with x of j omega h of j omega right so what do we have we know over here we know over here if i am doing using the fourier transform so if x of t i know uh, i i know the corresponding uh, f uh, fourier transform of it right and i have h of j omega as well so i can simply multiply these two to get my y of j omega and then i would split back into the time domain so uh, what do i have first so my y of j omega this would be x of j omega and x of j omega would be what it would be exponential of negative d so which means a is equal to 1 so 1 over j omega plus 1 it would be 1 over j omega plus 1 and this would be multiplied with that thing j omega plus 2 divided by j omega plus 1 into j omega plus 3 so what would you have you would have a j omega plus 2 divided by j omega plus 1 whole squared into j omega plus 3 the thing or the, the idea was in the squared so that's why the book has discussed it now how do you do it by a partial fraction again by partial fraction so you could write this j omega plus 2 upon j omega plus 1 whole squared j omega plus 3 you could write it as a upon j omega plus 1 when you have repeated repetition this is called this sort of a repetition this is a repeated linear fraction or something like that this is an a upon j omega plus 1 then you do what you write a b upon this repetition to the power j omega plus 1 whole squared if you have a 3 so then you would write for j omega plus 1 plus power 2 and then a plus c to the power 3 something like that you know it from your mathematics i don't know it that well then you have a plus c which is a j omega plus 3 and this you can solve by your own self okay i cannot solve it again so my a would come out to be 1 over 4 1 over 4 b is 1 upon 2 b is 1 upon 2 c is minus 1 over 4 you know the steps how to solve this the lcm is this thing you multiply it on both sides to make one zero you take the other zero to make yes to make one to calculate one take the other zero over here you would have the third term so for that you would need to have a uh, the a would probably be causing problem for that you would do it you would make the uh, the coefficients comparing coefficient you multiply each and everything inside and you do what to compare the coefficient you can do it your by your very own self what do i get the thing is that i get uh, let me remove uh, this portion the thing is that i get uh, this is my y of j omega right so my y of j omega is one upon four times one over j omega plus one plus 
1 upon 2 times 1 over j omega plus 1 squared plus, and then you have a minus 1 over 4 times uh, 1 over j omega plus 3. The corresponding y of t, the corresponding y of t would be what? Let me write it over here. So the corresponding y of t 1 over 4, for 1 over j omega plus 1 you have this thing. It would be an exponential of uh, negative t u of t. Right? I do not need to write it within the brackets. Or, or what was the problem? Anyways, plus 1 over 2, you have a squared over here, let it be. Then you have a minus 1 over 4, you have an exponential of negative 3t u of t. For, what, for the square, what do we have? So we have a formula. We have a formula for what Fourier transform? Let me, you know, write it with the black color. So the corresponding Fourier transform for this sort of a signal, if you have a plus j omega to the power n, so this would be an exponential of negative a t u of t as it is, but you would have a t multiplied with it. And t is raised to the power n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 whole factorial. And this formula is also the general form of that formula. So this you have another formula and these are the two formulas that you need to remember. That you need to do what? You need to remember. So now what do I have? I could write from here that uh, you would have a t, wait what is the value of n? The value of n is squared 2. So you have a negative uh, 2t? No, no, no. It's 1 over here, yes. So an exponential of negative 1, is, A is negative 1 of course. So you have an exponential of uh, negative T U of T that is as it is. Now T and this T would be what? Uh, N minus 1, so N is 2, you have T to the power 1, N minus 2 minus 1, 1 factorial is again 1. So you only have to multiply this by a T and that is it. That is it. and 1 upon 2 I missed so 1 upon 2 was this one that is it for this video that is it for this topic as well see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah where we discuss some examples most probably where we compile this Fourier transform thing till then take care of yourself and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers goodbye